What's up y'all, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to go over the basics of options. So let's get into it. First things first, there are two type of options. There's calls and then there's puts. So first, if we think the share price of a stock is about to go up or what they call bullish, we automatically think call option. If we think the share price of a stock is about to go down or what they call bearish, we automatically think put option. Right. So if you think it's if, if you see a stock and you're like, oh, this can go up ten dollars, then you're going to want to place a call option on that. So if you look at a stock and you say, OK, this stock has the potential to run up ten dollars, then you're going to want to buy a call option. If you look at a stock and say, oh, wow, this has the potential to run down ten dollars, then you're going to want to buy a put option. That's simple. Call means up. Put means down. So what's the goal, right? The goal is to either sell the call option contracts or put option contracts, depending on which ones you bought back to the market for profit. It is super simple concept. You want to buy low, sell high. You bought a put option for $10. You want to sell the put option for $20. You bought a call option for $20. You want to sell the call option for $30, right? Buy low, sell high. If you're a long term investor, you may want to exercise your option. And we're going to talk about what that means in one of the later slides. Now, let's break down some contracts. So first things first, you want to know that each contract price, otherwise known as the premium, is multiplied by 100. Why is it multiplied by 100? This is because you control 100 shares per contract. So, for example, we'll take we'll take the $144 call, right? You can see that on the top left right here. We're looking at Apple. This is a $144 call. To the right, you see 19 cents. That's not 19 cents. It's really $19. Why? We have to times that 19 cents by 100 because per contract, you can control 100 shares. And I'll make sure you understand why you control 100 shares per contract just here in a few. But first, let's talk about the expiration date. So each contract has its own expiration date, whether it's a call, whether it's a put, each contract has its own expiration date. Each contract must be sold or exercised. Like I said, we'll go over that before the day of expiration is over. What does that mean? If I buy this $144 call that expires on July 9th, I have to sell this contract before July 9th or the day of July 9th before the market closes for that day. I cannot hold this till July 10, 12, 13 because it expires on July 9th. If you remember one of my previous videos, we talked about the difference between shares and options. One of the main differences was that you can hold shares for as long as you want for the rest of your life if you choose to. But with options, options will always have an expiration date. Third, you cannot change your expiration date. So if you buy July 9th, you cannot just, you know, edit the edit the contract and now it expires July 16th. Once you buy it, the only way you can get rid of it or change it is simply by selling it back to the market, right? So if I buy July 9th, I cannot just change it. The only way I can get out of it is to sell it and then I can go buy July 16th. So make sure you pay attention to that and buy what expiration date you mean to buy the first time. And we'll go over in my next video which contract you should look to buy. Lastly, you do not have to wait until the expiration date to sell your contracts. What do I mean by that? Let's say today, July 7th, right? I buy this contract. I buy the $144 call on July 7th. I don't have to wait until July 9th to sell it. I can choose this. I can sell it the same day. I can sell it the next day, but I must sell it by July 9th. That's the only thing. The option you could I could have an option contract that expires, you know, the year 2023 and it's 2021 in case you're watching this in 2023 but i can have an option contract that expires in 2023 and sell it tomorrow and i wouldn't and it, it will be okay because i sold it before the expiration date so you get to choose when you want to sell your contract next let's talk about exercising your option right this is primarily for long-term investors most people what's more what's most popular is to just sell your contract back to the market if you don't know i started with 150 dollars so for me this was my that was my goal i wanted to you know buy a contract and sell the contract for profit right quick money you know put some money in my pocket grow my account that way i can be able to do other things but for you if you have a little more money if you're interested in the long game this may be a good route for you as well according to this screenshot on the left the share price of apple is 139.89 
let's say today I bought the $144 call, right? Let's say tomorrow Apple is $160. I can choose to buy 100 shares of Apple at 144, otherwise known as the strike price instead of 160. This provides a major, major discount, right? Let me explain that a little bit. So I buy a call option for Apple. I buy this $144 call for $19 per contract, right? Let's just say I buy one. Tomorrow, Apple is $160. So the share price has gone from $139.89 to $160. It is past my strike price. So I can choose to buy 100 shares of Apple at the strike price instead of the current price, $160. So let's say I got the 141 call, right? I got the 141 call, Apple goes from 139.89 to 160. I choose to exercise my option and I buy 100 shares of Apple at 141 instead of 160. And I plan to hold these long term, you know, collect dividends, do what I gotta do. I don't think Apple gives dividends. Honestly, I don't think they do, but I can hold it long term. I'm invested in a multi trillion dollar company at a pretty decent price. Obviously, I'm already in profit if I bought it at 141 and the share price is at 160. And this is a strategy that's used by long term investors, right? If you want to get really heavy in a company at a cheaper price, you might want to exercise your option. But like I said, the most popular option, no pun intended, is to sell your contract back to the market for profit. So common misconceptions about the strike price right so you do not need the share price to reach or even come close to the strike price for you to make money selling your contracts the value of your contract will increase as the share price goes in your desired direction let's go over a quick example so the share price of this stock bb is currently nine dollars and 16 cents if i have the 12 dollar call and I plan to sell for quick profit, I do not need the share price to reach $12 to make money. A lot of new traders, you wouldn't, you'd be surprised how many new traders that I get, you know, whether in my comments or, or my DMs that say, hey, I got this call, you know, it was way what they call out the money, which I'll explain in a later video, you know, why am I in profit and the share price did not reach the strike price? What happens is the contract value increases as the share price increases, right? The strike price does not matter in this situation. The strike price or break even, which is something you'll see on Robinhood, is only relevant to those who plan on exercising the option. So unless you are planning on doing this, doing something for the long term, say you have the money to buy 100 shares of Apple at $140 a share, like that's the only time the strike price and the break even is going to matter to you right if you're looking to you know the share price of apple's 139.89 you have a 142 call the next day you wake up apple's at 160 and you want to just sell, give your contract back to the market and collect the money then if that's your plan you do not need to worry about the strike price or the break even it, it's pointless don't think about it it's not something you should be worried about right now as a beginner i want you to focus on this if you buy a call option, no matter what the call option is, you want the share price to go up. If you buy a put option, no matter what the strike price is or what any put option, you want the share price to go down. It's that simple. So just a quick recap, call option. You buy a call option if you anticipate the share price moving up. Put option. You buy a put option if you anticipate the share price moving down. If you're looking for a quick flip, your goal is to sell your contracts back to the market for profit. If you're looking for something long term, you have the capital, you have the money to do so, then you can look to exercise your options and hold certain stocks long term. Understand that each premium is multiplied by 100. So if you see something that says 10 cents, it's really $10. That's because, like I said, each contract allows you to control 100 shares expiration dates remember each option contract has its own expiration date you must sell or exercise your option before that expiration date okay and lastly for this video common misconceptions about the strike price if you are not looking to exercise your option do not think about the strike price or the break even it is not important to you it is not for you if you're looking to buy call options and put options and then sell those contracts back to the market you don't need to worry about the strike price okay 
that's all for this video guys i hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions at all please leave them down below i will be happy to answer them please look forward to the next video where i'm going to be breaking down which contracts you should look to buy right you don't want to just go and buy any contract that's what the next video is going to be about so i hope to see you there remember to like and subscribe and i will see you guys in the next video